Thanksgiving. We're so glad that you've joined us today. We are so thankful to the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, there are so many things to be thankful for today. And one of those, of course, is you at home. You're part of our 3ABN family, and it's always a blessing to spend this time with you. And today's a special time. Here in the United States, we celebrate Thanksgiving. But you know what, Jill? I think every day we should be thankful, shouldn't we? There's so many things. Good. To be thankful and for. greatly to be mm, praised. Amen. And that's what we're going to do today. We have our friends, our mentors, our family <laughs> on right. the set with us today. And then we're going to be having rolls mm. um, from our managers. You mean like bread with butter rolls? Because <laughs> it's Thanksgiving Day, you know, I'm yeah. rolls. I know, I'm that sorry. That would be I'm really too. nice. Mm. But <laughs> now, actually, there's no eating on the set today, although okay. you can be eating at home, and that's not a problem as you're watching this program. There's no problem with that because you're part of the Family. That's right. But rolls means we pre recorded right. some special segments with mm. our managers and employees. We have employee greetings from some of those that you don't always get to see. I am looking forward to those. And then we have a special theme. Each one of the managers had a different theme. Mm. Some is on the goodness of God, some is on the miracles that God's worked in their lives, some is on dealing with loss or what how do we handle trial or what are the promises of God that we can claim from his word. So I'm looking forward to this exciting program together. Mm, absolutely. And here on the set with us is Mr. Danny yes. Shelton, founder of Three Angels Broadcasting Network. Sitting next to you, your lovely wife, Dr. Yvonne. So good to have both of you on here on this Thanksgiving day. Thank you. It's, for me, it's my favorite uh, holiday of the year. Thanksgiving, as you said, we should be that way mm. every day, but That's right. specifically this time of year, you know, people seem to get in the grateful mood and we, helps us to think back and look back the rest of the year how God has blessed us. Amen. Even though we don't always know it and we're not always aware of it because we let our feelings and what have you get in the way, there's a time to set aside and just say, thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Amen. amen. Wow. Amen. This time of year for me is so special. Mm -hmm. I, family gets together, mm -hmm. we get to eat together and it's just a wonderful time. And I get to be with you guys, which I love, and with you, Amen. which is such a blessing, our 3ABN family. So. Amen. Amen, Amen to the blessing. 3ABN family. What a blessing. Amen. Sure. <laughs> there are so many things that we're thankful for, and one of those, of course, is the Word of God. That's what 3ABN has been based off of from the very beginning, the Word of God and the truths that are found in it. And what we want to do is actually start with a little scripture. We thought the four of us here would uh, read a portion of Psalm 136. And hopefully at home you'll open your Bibles as well and read along with us Psalm 136. And uh, Dr. Yvonne, let's start with you, verses 1 through 3, Jill, 4 through 6, and I'll do 7 through 9. We'll just kind of keep going from there. Okay. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of gods, for His mercy endures forever. Mm. Oh, give thanks to the Lord of Lords, for His mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. To Him who alone does great wonders, mm -hmm. for His mercy endures forever. To Him who by wisdom made the heavens, mm -hmm. for His mercy endures forever. To Him who laid mm -hmm. out the earth above the waters, for His mercy endures forever. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Verse 7, to Him who made great lights, for his mercy endures forever. The sun to rule by day, for his mercy endures forever. The moon and stars to rule by night, 
for his mercy endures forever. And then verses 10 through 23 talks about the Israelites and their journey and how God took care of them. But Mr. Danny, why don't we pick up with uh, verse 23 through 26. Who remembered us in our lowly state for his mercy endures forever. I love that, it just keeps coming back to it. And rescues us from our enemies. We all need that for sure. For his mercy endures forever. Who gives us, gives food to all flesh for his mercy endures forever. Oh, give thanks to the God of heaven for his mercy endures forever. Oh, amen. amen, praise the Lord. Amen. Yeah. What a blessing, right? We serve an awesome God. It is. He takes care of us. I think about 3 ABN all of these years, mm -hmm. 38 years plus, right? God's taking care of this ministry. Just in the nick of time, He takes care of us. We're faith-based ministry, and God uses you to pour through 3 ABN mm -hmm. to reach the entire world. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord for that. Mm -hmm. Dr. Yvonne, let's open in prayer as we yeah. start this program. Dear Lord, thank you so very much. We, we're so grateful to you. And this is the time of year really when people get together and say thank you, but we should be saying thank you every yes. single day because your mercy endures forever and you're so good. So please be with us throughout this program. Be with our 3ABN family, our viewers and listeners. Help that they will too will have a spirit of thanksgiving mm -hmm not just today, but every day. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 You know, that phrase, for his mercy endures forever, mm -hmm. occurs 26 times in that psalm. Wow. Mm -hmm. You reiterated it in your prayer, but it's just amazing to me. You know, we don't think of the mercy of God mm -hmm. as much as we should, the faithfulness and the goodness of God. Yes. So today, we're gonna give thanks for the mercies yeah, of God and that they endure forever. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the first roll. Sounds, Sounds good. Sounds oh yeah, good. we have a lot today, this would be fun. We have Pastor James mm -hmm. and Reese Rafferty who've been really part of the ministry for how many years has it been since well, they've been doing programming? Oh, a long time. I, I don't even know if I'd say 20 years. I know yeah. Brother James has been on at least that long, oh, maybe yes. longer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a long time. It's been a very long time. Mm -hmm. Pastor James, of course, is 3 being Director of Discipleship. Even though they've been on programming for years, um, they officially joined the team more recently and we're so grateful for his leadership as Director of Discipleship right, and amen. BC is working with Health Ministries. We love them both. And they're talking about the goodness of God. The Bible says that we're to give thanks because of God's goodness. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his goodness. And I mean, what an incredible reason to be grateful. And I am so, so grateful that God is good. He is a good God. But I, I started thinking about it and I was wondering, what do we mean exactly when we say that? And is that understandable by everyone when we say that God is good? Because a lot of times we have our own definitions of what good is. We attach our own preferences to what good is. I, I was thinking even of how, you know, I think dark chocolate is good and bad, milk chocolate is bad, but you might think the absolute opposite, or you might think chocolate is bad, you know, and all. And so we, yeah, look at this definition of good from our own perspective, and I'm not sure that we will, in fact, I actually don't think that we'll really come to know God's goodness if we approach it in that way. So we approach God's goodness sometimes from our own preferences, and we are not accurate assessors of what is good. We don't do good at defining what good is. And the Bible talks about this. It says mm -hmm. that, you know, we're gonna call good evil and evil good. I think we do that a lot. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of biblical examples of this as well, where you really see that as human beings, we, we don't know what's really good. When mm -hmm. Jesus was um, casting out demons, people thought that he was doing that out of the power of evil. They thought that was bad. Mm -hmm. Or when he was eating with publicans and sinners, mm -hmm. they were like, no, that, that's bad. Well, how about when God was uh, sending Jonah to destroy Nineveh, right? And yeah. so here's this prophet going to destroy Nineveh, and you know, God has mercy on the city. And of course, we would think, oh, that's great. You know, he saved all those thousands of people, and God even reasoned with Noah that way, Jonah that way. But Jonah's upset. He's God's missionary and he said, that's not good. You know, that's not good for my reputation. That's not good for how people are gonna look at me. So our perspective on what is good, our perspective on, on the goodness of God is different based upon our own biases. And we see this all through scriptures. I mean, what about the flood, for example? Mm -hmm. You know, the flood, oh, that was terrible. But in a sense, it was good. He, God wiped out wickedness, but he wiped out all those people and only saved Jonah. And so the different perspectives we have 
on God's goodness are based a lot of times on our humanity and not necessarily on what the biblical definition of good would be. So how would you define goodness? Well, God's goodness to me is a revelation of who He is. God is good. And in order to really to define goodness, we have to really look to God. He's the source of goodness. And for me, it's really simple. When God does something, I say that's got to be a good thing because God's the one that's doing it. And that helps me to, to identify the act itself. Mm -hmm. If the act itself is something that I'm not sure of, I look at the way God relates to it and the way God relates to it. So let's just, I'm just gonna put myself in the place of Jonah. And so I'm like, okay, I'm preaching this message. It's a prophetic message. You got 40 days and it's over. And then it doesn't happen. And I'm looking at uh, the whole situation feeling really perplexed and kind of upset because I wanted to go to Joppa in the first place. I wanted to go on vacation anyway. I didn't want to give this message. And God says, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's thousands of people here that I got to save. Whoa, thank you, God. I think jo Job went through the same thing. Job lost everything, right? And Job could say, by faith, the Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But in the end, Job is kind of struggling. And then God shows up. And God says, I want to share something with you, Job. You know what you've been through? Well, I'm connected to you. I'm connected to every part of my creation. There's nothing, not a horse, not a bird. There is nothing in the sea that moves and breathes that I'm not connected with. So all the pain that you've gone through, all that pain has come to me. And I just want to give you that perspective. And Jonah's like, thank you, Lord, I needed that. <laughs> this whole thing is okay now. I'm good now. I'm good now because you've shown me that you've connected with me through all of this. And I love that, I love that perspective. God is the one that gives us the perspective on what is good because we're biased, you know? Milk chocolate, dark chocolate, we're biased, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you brought up Job because I think that there's a lot of things that take place in our lives that we're not sure is good or bad. We think they're bad, but maybe they're ultimately going to work for my good as God's mm -hmm. promised to do. And that's the beautiful thing about God's goodness is that in spite of whatever occurs in my life that mm -hmm. looks like bad, when I live a life that's surrendered to Him, He is going to work all of it out for good. And that is something, again, to be so incredibly thankful for. Yeah, that's why the Bible tells us that we can be thankful in all things. Mm -hmm. You know, and all things give thanks. Well, why? Because we know God. And because we know, Romans 8, 28 says, we know that God works out all things for good to them that love Him, to the called according to His purpose. So God has this purpose. I, I think about the story, for example, of uh, Nebuchadnezzar. He's put on the longest time out in the Bible, right? Seven years, you're not talking, you're not speaking, you're a crazy man. And if you think about that, that, man, that must have been hard. Like for him, he lost all his counselors, he lost his position, he lost everything that meant something to him earthly comes out of that whole thing and the first thing he says is, thank you, Lord, you are so good. Mm. You are so good. Man, that, that's a converted man if you think about it. God did whatever it took to humble him and get him to a place where he could acknowledge God and be saved in the kingdom of heaven. In fact, Daniel 4 is Nebuchadnezzar's personal testimony and his personal testimony is God is good all the time. All the time God is good. And yet when you look at the story, you're thinking, are you sure about that? Yes, I'm sure about that because God has shown me his heart and his heart reveals to me that he did this for a good purpose, for a good outcome. Yeah, and how God revealed his heart is through Jesus Christ. So Jesus is the standard of good, not my preferences, not my personal definition. Again, there's gonna be a lot of things that happen in this life that I don't understand, but I can still trust on that rock, on that undeviating absolute that Jesus Christ, that God the Father, that the Holy Spirit, they are good. They are the standard and they're unchanging. The mm -hmm. Bible says there's no darkness in them at all. Yeah, in fact, uh, sitting here at 3ABN, we're not just guests here, we're actually part of the 3ABN team, part of the 3ABN family. And two years ago, give or take, I was just wanting to see my life in the rearview mirror. I just, we were going through a terrible experience, a great trials, and I just thought, what, how is God gonna bring good out of this? And now here, two years plus later, I'm like, God did actually bring good out of this. This is a good place to be. A good situation has come out of this. I'm as happy as ever, blessed as ever, thankful as ever, God is good. Mm -hmm. I really like that story that you often tell like in evangelistic series about the farmer who 
um, went through all these experiences. He lost his horse and everyone thought, oh, that's bad. And the farmer was like, maybe it is, maybe it's not. Mm -hmm. And then you want to share the rest of the, the story? The horse came back with three other horses and, and the neighbor said, oh, this is great. And he said, maybe so, maybe no. And then the, one of his sons was breaking the horse, you know, to ride it and he fell off and broke his leg. And they said, oh, this is terrible. And the farmer says, maybe so, maybe no. Then the army, army came through to conscript all, conscript all the young people and his son couldn't be taken by the army because his leg was broken. And they, oh, you're so that's so good that your son didn't have to be, well, maybe so, maybe no. We don't know, we can't define what is good, but God always knows and he's always working for our good. Amen. Amen. Yeah, God is good. So what we found out is Amen. God is good all the time, Amen. Yeah. but it's really up to us to depend on the Word of God, yeah. not just on our feelings, not just on our emotions, but anytime we get discouraged, anytime we're saying, man, I'm just so concerned about what's going on, remember, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Mm, God amen. is good. Amen. I thought that was such a rich mm. answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, that whole idea yeah. of how good God is and sometimes we don't understand why mm -hmm. things happen, but yeah. God knows and he's working everything for our good. That's so right. Thank you, James and Ruth, mm. for that. Amen. That was yeah, so beautiful. encouraging and inspiring. Thank amen. you. Amen. Yeah, amen. What a blessing the Rafferty's are. They are they a are. Three, being incredible a asset to this ministry mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. to the Lord's work. Yes, amen. amen. Oh yeah, amen. faithful to the word of God too. What a blessing. Mm -hmm. Our next role we want to go to is the Bergmans, Jason and Francine and their daughter Amanda. And of course, Jason is our CFO here at 3ABN, Francine, Aunt Francine, as you may know her, is the general manager of our Kids Network. And of course, Amanda, she's on a few of the programs and attends our local school here. But what a blessing. God sent this family here to 3ABN and it's just neat again how we can come together and uh, serve the Lord. And I know that uh, we can work with him quite a bit, don't we, both of them? Quite we often. do indeed. The Lord brought them mm. here. There's no doubt in my mind. We love the Bergmans and they're going to share with us about everyday blessings. We enjoy everyday blessings because it all comes from God. If it wasn't for God, we wouldn't have these blessings. We take so much for granted, don't we? We sure do. Yes, and I value family, for example. Um, we all value our family, and sometimes by the words we say, we take that for granted. Absolutely. And other, and other things that we take for granted, um, like a home, um, just oxygen, breathing every day, and having a great morning. There's so much, and we think of Lamentations 3.22, where it says it's a fresh every new day and that God is showing his mercy and his grace to us. And I think if it wasn't for God, we wouldn't have what we have, these homes and other things, um, and good health, right? Well, you know, I think about good health, and we've had some issues in, even in our family, and uh, I, I realize that we take a lot of these things that everyday life living for granted, mm -hmm. and health is super important, um, that we, uh, you know, we get up in the morning, we think everything is normal, and until something hits us, we realize, wow, um, we miss those things that were affected by, um, by having health issues. So, but yeah, praise the Lord. Even food and water we take for granted. Do mm -hmm. you have something to tell us, um, Amanda? Yeah, you need to drink plenty of water. <laughs> we had an experience with her because you realize we know that God is the living water, but there's times where we forget even to drink enough water and sometimes our body suffers. And just that freedom that we have good drinking fresh water is something that we may take for granted. Now, our family really enjoys nature. We like going for walks and we go to the park and uh, there's a park that we have fun going on bike rides or uh, walking there. And there's a lot of things that uh, we see there. Um, and sometimes it's the, the nature of toads and frogs. And there was another time, you wanna tell us about another story? So we found this stick and uh, we thought, wow, you know, who did this? And have you ever heard of a bucktooth beaver? Um, some of us, when we were younger, we may have been called that. But you know, um, seeing this stick, uh, a bucktooth beaver was very positive in providing this wonderful uh, walking stick that we can enjoy. And if we didn't see it, we would have never experienced it and appreciated what God has given to us and given the bucktooth beaver the tools to make his home a wonderful home. 
and, and a stick for us for walking. But you know, that reminds us too that the beaver is building his home, but we have to remember that what we're building here on Earth is really for eternity. We want to live for eternity, and so the things that we have in our lives that can be a blessing, like building our character or being a blessing for others, we're really building for eternity. And that is something that we want to um, always treasure. But I'm also thinking of something that we love in nature. Now this year we had something special. You want to tell us about it, Amanda? Well, we've had in our backyard, oh, in yes. our backyard, we have some beehives, for example. And this is the first year that we got to uh, harvest them, and we have some pictures um, of harvesting, harvesting the them. Honey. But you want to tell us a little bit about bees? So I will say, from my experience, for the first time in owning bees for about eight years, I don't know if they own me or I own them, but um, maybe I'm just a steward of the bees. But this is the first year we were able to um, capture the honey um, from the bees. And when you think of all the time they spent um, in a lifespan of about 30 to 45 days, it takes 12 bees to acquire one teaspoon of honey. And when you think of how the Lord designed these bees to harvest all of that pollen and all of that sugar from the flowers in order to, for the flowers to produce more. How, what a blessing it was for us to be a part of this experience. And you know, what I found is the closer we get to God's nature, the more amazing it is. And when you see these bees flying into the hive or you see them you know, working with the other bees. And some bees are great flyers. They'll fly into the hive and fly out. And others, they run into the other bees and um, personalities of bees. So it's amazing as we consider how the Lord has blessed us if we stop and spend time with Him. You know, the Bible verse that comes to mind is Psalms 46.10, and it says, Be still and know that I am God. When we spend time with Him, when we stop our daily activities and consider all that He has done for us, how amazing our God is to us. Mm -hmm. I really like that because they do so much work and yet they have an important part. And if it wasn't for those bees, we wouldn't have lots of the fruit that we have or the vegetation that or we the have. Flowers. And so we take a little simple things like that for granted. Um, and, you know, I'm always reminded about how wonderful God is and, and how much He's leading us because there's so many blessings that we see in eternity. And I'm thinking about um, when we have eternity in view. For example, we know that our time is short, um, just like the bees, okay? It's here for a time, but we can make the biggest impact. In, so when we see these beautiful sunsets, we know that God is coming soon and we have that blessed hope. And that reminds me of some other blessings of people just like you at home. You wanna talk about that? Uh, yes, you know, we, we have this wonderful family that um, we enjoy each um, experience. And when we talk about our family, we talk about how God brought us all together, each one of us um, to this family in order to glorify God. But you are also part of that family, and without you, we wouldn't have these blessings that we can also share to the world and become a ministry because of what you have done as well. And you know, I think we need to thank our donors for what they have done um, for the ministry of 3ABN. And I just want to thank you all for your systematic giving, your dedication to 3ABN, to the, the joy that you bring to millions of people. And we won't know until um, Jesus comes and we're in heaven together. So thank you. And those who have not been a part of our 3ABN team, please consider um, being a part of 3ABN. You know, when you look, and, and I'm going to pull out a $100 bill, and I'm going to pull out a $1 bill, and when you look at these two instruments, you see that they're the same size. See, they're the same size. They have different values. But if we don't use them, they are worthless. That's true. That's true. 
So we value people like you because you are a blessing to this ministry and we thank you for that. And you, I am thinking of Psalms 100, three, verse one, it says, bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name, bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not his benefits. We don't want to forget all the blessings that has, God has given us. So we want to wish you on, from our family to you, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. That was so Amen. lovely. Amen. 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 Thinking about the blessings of God, and I love that story about the bees. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. You know, right? Yeah. I think I'm going to hit them up for a little honey, actually. <laughs> What'd you think? Well, what a great family, number yes. one, and, and great, again, asset to 3ABN, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to see these younger folk, and we can call those younger folk like that coming in, but with such great dedication and love for Jesus. So today, I think each and every, every person, all of us here and the ones that we're hearing, and I think the ones we're going to continue mm -hmm. to hear was coming back to that theme, count your many blessings, mm. name them one by one, you, and it may surprise you what the Lord has done. I think that's the way that old <laughs> yes, song it does. says. Mm -hmm. goes yeah. Amen. 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 The honey's fabulous. I just have to say, we just got a little bit of honey and it's oh. fabulous. So you need to hit them up for some. <laughs> I'm going to hit them up. <laughs> that's good. So we're going next to uh, an employee role. So this is some of the people that you might not always get to see at home, but they are an integral part of this ministry. Amen. We always say one of the most important things we have in this ministry is our people. Without our people, and that's including you at home, 3ABN would not be able to mm. share the gospel to the world. 3 is a family. That's right. You're part of the family, and we feel like family as we work together mm -hmm. as families. So we're going to go to that and mm. see a whole bunch of different employees. Yeah, it's fun, and I appreciate the crew that went around to some of the offices yes. here at 3ABN. We have a number of different buildings, but they went around and said, so what are you thankful for? So let's go to one of those roles right now. Hi, my name is Marilyn Durant, and I'm the call center manager. And I'm grateful for my staff. My health and my family. This year, I'm thankful for friends and family. This year, I'm thankful for health and healing. Hi, I'm thankful for all the viewers and donors of 3ABN. I'm thankful for my family, and I'm very thankful for my 3ABN family. Our faithful donors. I'm thankful for my family. Hi, I'm Carolyn, and I'm thankful for being at 3ABN for 21 years. This year, I'm thankful for my boss. Well, I am grateful for Jesus. Where would I be without my Lord? The plan of salvation for where I am today, I praise God for my Lord. Well, I'm thankful of happiness and family and friends that they're always here for me. And yep, that's it. Presters and annuitants. I'm thankful for our vendors and for God's love. I'm thankful for my job. The absolutely beautiful weather we have had the last couple of weeks. So I want to say how thankful I am for our entire 3ABM production team. Because of them, I'm able to do this and we get programming for you. Oh, hi. You caught me uh, pretending to work. What am I most thankful for? Financial security and stability. Hi, my name is Spencer, and I'm thankful for the career opportunities that Christ has provided me. What I'm thankful for is a place to call home. Hi, my name is Jamie. I do lighting here. I'm thankful for my husband, my family, and my 3ABN family. Well, Amen. Was <laughs> that, yeah, I know. That was, good. that was a fun role. Yeah, we went to a number of different departments there. What yeah. departments did we hear that from? That was call center. Mm -hmm. That was accounting. Radio. Production. 3ABN radio. Mm -hmm. Did I miss one in there? But 
I hope not. A Kirsten at the front desk. Nice That's work. another one. So, okay. absolutely. I love that to see yeah. that. Great Hard working job. group. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And how blessed. So, mm -hmm. we're thankful for all of not only our folks at home, but these, we're calling them today, I think, behind the scenes folk. Mm -hmm. As you said, we don't see them every day. You don't see them on camera, but they're here. Mm -hmm. they they're are. working. Mm -hmm. And they have a sense of humor. We yes. know he wasn't pretending to work. He was working. <laughs> of course. Because he's a hard worker. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we, we, we're blessed. That's all, yeah. all I can say. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I love our team here. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, and the guests who come here uh, always say how much they love the, the crew and how good they are. And Amen. we just have, to me, I might be a little biased, but we have the best crew. Amen. Amen. So Amen. thankful. Praise you know that's true, Greg, when... I talk to different people, and a lot of them are well-known evangelists and speakers from 3ABN, and maybe I see them somewhere, we're talking on the phone, and they say, oh, how's the crew doing? How the You've got the <laughs> best crew, any tape, anywhere we go, we love coming to 3ABN, mm -hmm. and tell everybody we said hello. Amen. Amen. Yeah, no, we're very blessed. I'm yeah. looking at even this set here today, celebrating yeah. Thanksgiving, mm. right? Beautifully decorated, a lot of yes. work went into it, but we thank the Lord for a great crew staff here at 3ABN. Mm -hmm. It's our next role we're going to. We're going to J.D. and Shelly okay. Quinn. I always think of J.D. as the grandpa of 3ABN, just <laughs> meaning that he's grandfatherly and he just mm -hmm. pulls you in and prays for you and mm -hmm. he does that with so many here at 3ABN. J.D., of course, is our pastoral department manager and Shelly is program development manager and producer. We love both of them. They're talking about blessings through trials. Mm. Mm. Amen. Yes, we love the Quins, so let's go to that role right now. Hello. We wish you a happy, oh, happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. We're here today to talk to you about blessings in trials. It's been kind of difficult to figure out what story to tell. I could honestly say that probably 70% of my life and even of our lives have been trials. And when we are in a trial, we should never ask why. We should ask why not. In Romans 8, 17, it says we are children of God, heirs with Christ, if we suffer with Him, that we may be glorified together. And we all face challenges, we all face trials, but we have a choice how we will respond. Let me just say this quickly, and then I'll give you a chance okay. to say something. But 1 Peter 5.10 is one of my favorite scriptures. It says, may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. That has been the blessings of our trials, don't you think? I think so. I think that uh, the word that comes to my mind when we think about this particular topic is maturity. Yes. Whenever we're young, we're not eliminated from having trials. I think we go from one trial to another trial, like from one lily pad to another lily pad. As time goes by, we, we start maturing. And then we're fortunate enough that Jesus comes into our life. And then according to the teaching that we have, I think then we learn that this is part of our maturing. And so as we start maturing, we still have trials. Trials is with us day and night. But how do we handle those trials? Do we handle them without murmuring? Or are we complainers? There's both, there's both complainers and there's both murmurers. And then I'd like to think as time goes by and you mature, oh no, it's another trial, but Lord, please assist me in getting past this. You know, I think the greatest blessing that I have learned in trials is to practice God's presence. I ask Him to give me a divine awareness of His presence, and He has taught me to experience His constant presence with me. Um, I did a sermon not too long ago after a couple of surgeries that I had called Lessons Learned in God's Waiting Room. And I want to just bring out one particular thing. When we are going through a trial, 
Some people think it's wrong to talk about it or admit that it's overwhelming. But I wanted to point out something in 2 Corinthians 1.8. Paul says, we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we despaired even of life. You know, in 1 Corinthians 10.13, Paul said that God will never let us be tempted beyond what we can bear, but will always make a way out. But he doesn't promise that trials aren't going to overwhelm us. Paul goes on and he says, we don't want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure above strength so that we despaired even of life. Yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God who raises the dead. Oh, I know that what I have learned is Holy Spirit, please help me, okay? The Holy Spirit, I mean, that's, that's a gift that we're given. And then I get into prayer. Romans 12, 12, rejoicing in hope. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hope in Greek is what? Eager expectation. Eager expectation. So if you know that Jesus is on your side, that he's got your back, well, then you go forward. So rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation. They're sitting here saying, hey, you're going to have tribulation. Absolutely. So rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continue steadfastly in prayer. Prayer is very, very important. Free gift. We go directly to the Creator. Lord, help me. I know that you said that there's going to, that I need, I need to be patient. But now we go back to that choosing the murmur, or whether we just, Lord, I know that you have a plan for my life. And like you started off by saying, Shelley, oh my goodness, if you live long enough. You have lots and lots of trials. Financial trials, physical trials, uh, relational mm -hmm. trials. There's so many different kinds of trials. And I'm beginning to experience, I'm not going to say mental trial, but remembering trials. <laughs> I mean, it's just absolutely amazing. You know, <laughs> you're, I, you're didn't, telling I, didn't get, I didn't get that little book, How to Grow Older, Pay Up, Patiently? Humbly, <laughs> humbly. But here you've hit on a word, humble. Jesus humbled himself. God, of the, the creator God humbled himself to become a man, to die for us. And he wants to teach us humility. You know what? The blessing of trials, Romans 8, 28 says that God works all things together for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. And you're going through this awful trial and you think, Lord, how are you going to work this out for my good? Well, Romans 8, 28 and 29 should never have been separated. It was translators who put in verses. But what God is saying is all things work together to conform you to the image of Jesus. So that is what trials do. It teaches us to have hope, and, and hope isn't hope if you've already got the answer. It matures us, but it also makes us a blessing to others. How have we been able to yeah. minister? Let me uh, read here. This is uh, Psalms, uh, Psalm 66, and I want to read 10 through 12. Because remember, we've already established that we're going to have trials. So it says, For you, O God, have tested us. Mm. You have refined us as silver is, re is refined. You brought us into the net. You laid a affliction on our back. You have caused men to ride over our heads. We went through the fire and through the water. But listen to this. But you brought us out to rich fulfillment. Amen. So if you look at the last page of the book, you win. Amen. Mm -hmm. And along the, line, the way, as we go through these trials, we develop the character of Christ. And we pray that for you. We know that everyone's going through trials, but our prayer for you is that 
Learn to just be filled with thanksgiving for God and learn to praise Him and to walk through the trial with eager expectation, which is hope. hope. God, God bless. bless you. Wow. Thank Amen. You. Amen. Thank you, Shelley and JD. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I mean, when you look at the big picture, the big picture is the wages of sin is death. We live in a mm -hmm. sinful world, but because we have a Savior, mm -hmm. we don't have to go through all these trials and tribulations by ourselves. That's right. We can turn it over to the Lord Jesus Christ. So in the long run, when we look at the big picture, if we were always healthy, always feeling great, we become independent. Mm -hmm. we, mm -hmm. Suddenly we don't need a Savior. Mm -hmm. good so God allows us as we grow older, especially to go through those trials to realize, you know what, we're here for a short time. We need to make up our mind. Where do we want to spend eternity? And it gives us an opportunity to really fall in love and discover Jesus. Amen. Amen. Wow. I love what Shelley and JD said. Mm -hmm. It was so encouraging. One of my favorite verses is Psalm 61, verse 2. From the end of the earth, I will cry to you. Wow. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. All right. And so when we feel overwhelmed, we can go to the rock. That's and right. the name, the Hebrew name for the rock is El Tzur. Mm. We can go to El Tzur and say, anchor me. Wow. Yes. That's okay. Anchor me when Praise my it. heart is overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Praise right. the Lord. Amen. You're right. So encouraging, right? What mm. they had to share about the... Uh, you know, really God's with us through our trials. I think about Isaiah, you know, he hasn't, God hasn't promised to keep us from the storms and trials of life, but he's promised to be with us through them. Mm -hmm. And uh, what comfort, what hope. Next, we're going to Jay Christian and Sveta, his wife. And uh, Jay Christian, of course, is the general manager of our 3ABN radio network. Mm -hmm. And his wife, Sveta, is a direct product of 3ABN Russia over 30 mm -hmm. years ago. She mm -hmm. was baptized from those meetings. Is that right, Mr. Danny? Yes. And Pastor John Carter. Mm -hmm. And of course, 3ABN being over there. She is uh, works in our publishing department. And uh, what's the topic they'll be talking about um, today? They're talking about the promises of mm. God. We love Jay and Sviat, mm. and I'm looking forward to what they have to share. Well, the promises of God are interesting there we've been doing some reading about this and and we've uh, discovered that there are different people who say different things about how many promises uh, of God are in the Bible and we read what 37,000 somebody said that um, and uh, other people have said 8,000 and other people say 300 and all I know is when I read the Bible there are a lot of promises in there and one of the things that I think of is, it's so great, is when we read the Bible, there are people who are scoffers and naysayers and say this was written a long time ago by uh, some sheep herders and, and things like that. But, you know, it is so wise, it is so full of wisdom. And God has words of wisdom and comfort for everybody in this. And so whether it's 300, whether it's 8,000, whether it's 37,000, it doesn't make any difference. It's enough for everybody. Yeah, right. And uh, more than enough. <laughs> and probably more promises that I could sit down and read at any one time. But I'm, I'm going to throw a little curve in here. I'm going to quote Paul in Philippians 4.13. And this is my all-time favorite Bible text. This is the first one when I was studying the Bible, it just jumped out at me and, and said, this means something. And what he said when he was writing, when Paul was writing to the Philippians, he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And of course, that's Paul saying that, but it's a message from God. You and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so that's my default text for anything and everything. And so um, that's a, a favorite for me. When we were talking about this the other day, you said something about Isaiah 55. Yeah, 55, uh, I think 11. And it's a um, text about um, every word from God, it's uh, always will be done. It's like if God promised something, it will be 100% done. So when he gives us a promise, mm -hmm. when he tells us, I promise I will do this or I will do that or whatever, he doesn't say it. If he said it and then he didn't do it, because then God, it's void. Mm -hmm, because God never changed. Yep. 
yesterday, today, and forever. So he's always the same. Uh, one of the things that I've noticed was that there's a, there are a lot of don't fear, don't be afraid, fear not. Oh, yeah. And, you know, some people might bristle at that a little bit. We live in a sinful world yeah. and around us a lot of trouble, issues, and people never um, have 100% happiness, never. It's always something. Yeah. And uh, when we, when uh, I was mentioning that, uh, you know, some people bristle at the thought of fear or being afraid or something, like, I, I'm an adult, I can take care of myself. Well, I do all this and I do all that. And a lot of people do, and that's fine. But when you do that, you're leaving God out of things. Um, and if people stop and really think about it, um, they are in need of God 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There are crazy things happening in this world that I never ever thought I would see. And not only are they happening some other country, some other place, they're happening right here. All this craziness. And so, yeah, fear is a part of life. Even if people don't admit it. Fear, uh, being anxious about things, being concerned. There's some people that won't use the word fear. But uh, being concerned, yeah, I'm concerned about something. If you remember, it's uh, Psalm uh, 91. Who live? Help me. <laughs> Which one? I, I know. Oh, uh, Psalm, yeah. Uh, Verily though through, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, caught me by surprise. <laughs> and to stop and think about that for a second. But, yeah, it's a lot, uh, of, yeah. Pro if a yeah. lot of problem around you, but yeah. if you under yeah. God's control, yeah. you have God's peace. Yeah, so you're going through the uh, valley of the shadow of death and it can be very scary. Mm -hmm. And even if you're an adult, and you can handle these things. A lot of times that's an outward show. Uh, and these words are very important for everybody, even for people who think that way, because in reality, there is a concern in our lives uh, for our safety, for the safety of our family and friends, neighbors and, and so forth. Another uh, uh, one of the uh, promises of God is about raising children. Yeah. <laughs> And I, I tell you, I, I raised one child, uh, my daughter Jody, and I picked up a, another daughter uh, when she was about 21 or 22 when her mother and I got married a bunch of years ago. And uh, she's a member of the family, but I didn't raise her. But now all of a sudden we have how many grandchildren? Uh, seven. seven. Aren't, yeah, seven grandchildren, Russian grandchildren, and, and many of them are Russian-American grandchildren. And <laughs> <laughs> I watch and I see what's happening and, and uh, I say, uh, uh, well, I'll tell you, uh, I'm glad somebody else has to deal with them all of the time, you know. But I remember this from Proverbs 22, 6. Train a child in the way that they will go and when they are old, they will not depart from it. And that's true. And every time they made a decision, well, I'd do it differently. But um, now that I'm older than they were when they were raising me, I look back on the things that um, uh, they taught me. And you know, I'm doing them. I'm doing the very things that my parents said to do. So that's another promise of God. Now you have wisdom and thinking. They well, I, was right. <laughs> yeah, I don't have wisdom. They, they gave us, they gave me some wisdom. You know, I, I've got it on loan from God, not on myself. And so, um, you know, don't be anxious, don't be afraid, don't be any of that. Put your trust in the Lord. That's the way that it should be. And yeah. if we do that, God will bless us. Amen. 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 Promises of God. Put your trust in God. Mm. What an incredible, you know, when I discovered the promises in the word, it revolutionized my life. So we want to encourage you to do that at home as well. We're going to Pastor Kenny and Chris Shelton, who Pastor Kenny has been part of this ministry since the very beginning. Right. 
And what you know him talking? very well. Yes. <laughs> know, him, know him well. He yeah. says he knows me better because he's older than me and knew me since I was born, you know. What a powerful couple for the Lord. Yeah. They're they are. out for em yeah. emission and evangelism. And I tell you, what a blessing to have them a part of the ministry of 3ABN. We love them both. Yes, we do. And what are they going to be talking about? Miracles. Ooh. Wow. So okay. let's go to that right now. Praise the Lord, we had the opportunity. And again, happy Thanksgiving. This, this is the time of the season where we all just reflect and go back to all the miracles that God has done for each and every one of us. And so we've sat down, my wife and I, and, and, and looked at it since we were kind of signed miracles, and I'm so thankful for it, that we sat down and jotted a few very important ones. And again, we can't go into detail. She's a detailed person. I'm not really detailed. I just get into it and get it done. But praise God, you've got some down here that I know you want to share with the people. I do want to share. And you know, over the years, I have thought, I need to write these down while they're fresh in my mind. And so going back over this this week, I I realized that I had forgot a lot of the details, but God Amen. has always been there to lead us, to guide us, to protect Amen. us, and through different times in our lives. And of course, even in your life, many wow. times, even with the rising of this station, 3ABN, yeah. and then Behold the Lamp Ministries, yes. one miracle after another, mending broken people. If you've not watched that, you know, yes. everybody needs to Amen. watch that DVD. If they haven't got it, they can always get it, right? Amen. Or online. Yeah. But one thing that I kind of thought about was, especially during our evangelistic series, oh, yeah. we always experienced miracles during those times. Mm -hmm. And of course, just preparing for those times, you knew we were in a spiritual warfare because the enemy was attacking, whether yes. it was equipment, whether something was breaking down or we couldn't work things out, but we realized and we were on our knees a lot, still mm -hmm. on our knees a lot to say, yeah. Lord, help us, Lord, please bless, mm -hmm. make the mm -hmm. way. But one time, I think we were on our way to Port Ritchie, mm -hmm. Florida, and there was one thing after another that continued to happen mm -hmm. on the way. And the one thing that stood out in my mind, you were the driver. I was. And you know, we were in our <laughs> motor home, we're pulling a car. Can we stop very fast in a car? Oh no. Absolutely not. not. No. And all of a sudden there's this white mini SUV in front of us and a big flame of fire came out from underneath it started swerving on the road uh -oh. you tried to break and we're like oh, uh -oh. we can't stop mm -hmm. we're gonna hit that car oh, and it was going back and forth and back and forth mm -hmm. and I you know I don't even know if we said a quick prayer but we always pray before we get on the road mm -hmm. but at that moment we realized in our heart it, in fact it gives me chills Ooh. to think that all of a sudden yeah. our SUV <laughs> just came to a stop I mean, our, our motor home yes. came to a stop. Amen. And that was incredible because we've never been able to do that before. Right. And there's been mm -hmm. other times, for example, when we were in, we did a series in Georgia. We're about to go to another one soon. Uh, we are too, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. But anyway, yeah. we were in Georgia, mm -hmm. and I don't remember the name of this little church, but um, before we got there, there had been a lot of people preparing, of course, you know, and advertising. Mm -hmm. And there was a family that we learned about later that this gentleman, his wife was an Adventist, but he was not. Oh, honey, that's Do you amazing. remember what happened oh, to him? Oh, I do remember. Tell us I what do. happened. Oh, I do. Oh, I got to get excited about it. And I, again, look at look at the, what we're saying here. Just think about it. Listen to it. And, and then you make a decision. But this guy wanted to attend the meeting so bad, but he's a painter. And so he couldn't, you know, and, and, and they were going to paint a bank. And so th they can only do it at night after hours. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, he said, I can't, I can't come to the meetings and I want to come to the meetings and learn. Well, that very day when the meetings start, the bank was robbed. The bank was robbed. Therefore, he was put out of commission. He could not paint at night because of all the stuff they had to do and so on and so forth. He came to the meeting, accepted the message, praise God. And we think he's on fire and, and living for, for Jesus today. to be on fire now, and I'm not saying God Jesus. said rob the bank, so yes. just don't, don't, we don't go there. But no, but uh, it's a miracle. It, he, it, whether it was God's providence or what, but it was it an was. answer to his prayer, it wanting did. to know if he could come. Absolutely. And then another time, even at that same church, you know, a lot of times we have meetings yes. before the meetings begin. Mm -hmm. and so so we were speaking at that church that Sabbath and at the end, a lot of times I go up in the beginning at the end and help him in, with these series and, and I was up there and we were praying and yes. the Holy wow. Spirit began to fall. Do you remember yes. that? Yes. And as the Holy Spirit fell, I began to have thoughts and I felt real impressed that I needed to say these things. Yes. I can't recall exactly right. what it was, but as I was speaking, mm -hmm. people began to cry. Began to, and then you began to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. God was giving us 
what he was, was going giving on in us the, the church details what was in the of church. what was happening yes. in the church that needed to be healed. You know, the Bible, uh, we're told that if the church is ready, the people will people be able will to come. come. That's right. And the church wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. And at the end of that, the Holy Spirit began wow. to work on the hearts. People were crying, they were mm. hugging, and they came to us and they said, how did you know what was going yeah, on? Wow. We hadn't a clue. No we didn't idea. know those people. We knew about two people there. Mm -hmm. We did not know them, but the Holy Spirit began to tell us those Amen. things. Wow. Another time we <laughs> were doing exciting. some meetings in yes. the Philippines. Yes. You remember that? Yes, and I the, do. And we were at the, the Northern, president. Northern Philippines something. president. Yeah, yeah, over the church. The church. Okay. Yeah. And it was President Menez at the time. Yes, yes. And there was some questions about 3ABN and the signal there in the, the Philippines. So we had a couple camera people with us and, and we were there and then the president, mm -hmm. we were all talking about yes. it and what could happen wow. and what may happen and mm -hmm. the decisions they were making. Mm -hmm. And we all knelt down for prayer at the end. Do you remember? Well, five of us. Five of us five total. Of us down and we, as we were praying, mm -hmm. we heard the door open yeah. and a wind whew, blew across all of us. And I remember oh, thinking, wow. what is that? Yeah. <laughs> And so, after we were done, President Menez, he yes. walked out, he asked who? He asked the secretary who was right outside the door. The door. He said, who came in? He said, nobody. The door opened, there's a big blast of wind that whipped through here. He said, nobody came in, the door didn't open. Kind of interesting thought. We just praised the God, the Holy Spirit. It was dealing with 3ABN, getting the signal out, soul winning. Again, this is why we're doing what we're doing. Thanksgiving time, giving Just God praise and honor Lord. and glory Amen. for all that He does, yes. all He's been Every doing, day. you know, for for this ministry and mm -hmm. all the ministries around the world that want to see this 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 work come to an end. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus can come. And I think this one way will help if we spend a little time praising Him, thanking Him for yes. all that He does for he us each and every day. He inhabits our praises. And yeah. Thanksgiving is a perfect time to do that. Yes. You know, we yeah. think about Indians and, and pilgrims, but it's all about Jesus. Amen. He's the one that brought them here. To it it performs anyway. them. That's we, right. we had, quickly, we had another meeting, another series of meetings, and a lady that come up in another country, and she'd been diagnosed with a, uh, a tumor, tumor on the, on the brain. brain. Inoperable. She's going to die. She's laying she gets dumped plumb on the floor and she's crying. crying and weeping saying, oh God, and have mercy on me. We begin to pray, the her. church began to pray. You know, she felt a little different, jumped up and left and we didn't see her for two days. She came back in two days, said, hey, I've had, went to the doctor, had the test, there is no tumor, it gone. it's gone. We uh, serve a miracle Lord. working God. Song Absolutely. years ago said, and that's all I know of it, it said there's a miracle in the making, Amen. one just for you. Don't forget that. God bless you. Thank you for spending time with us. We pray a few little miracles we've touched on will be a great blessing to you. God bless each one. Wow. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Don't you love to hear miracle stories? Yes. Oh, oh yeah. all the time. I, know I do, and I know the folks oh, do at home too. Oh, yeah. You know, it, it occurred to me, they could talk for hours and hours and share miracles <laughs> of what God has done in their lives. Mm -hmm. And there's a reason because the blessing is on the go. go. On the go. That's right. The blessing of God is on the go. He says, go ye into all the world. And so each and every, in, in fact, I was thinking to myself, you know, just sitting probably in a chair, we don't see that much, mm -hmm. but nowadays we could. We have our telephones, we have other things that when we're witnessing, God honors that Amen. and he blesses that. And so today, if you wanna see blessings in your life, God wants to work in you and through you, and you can see great and mighty and marvelous things happen when you come in the name of the Lord. Amen. We come to the foot of the cross and ask Jesus to forgive us from our sins, and then he says, go and tell what I've done for you. Amen. Hey, we're gonna have to take a short break. We'll be back in just a minute. Hello and welcome back to 3ABN's special Thanksgiving program. We have been talking about all the things that we're so thankful for. And of course, one of those is you at home. Thank you so very much for being a part of our family, for your prayers and financial support for this ministry. You know, it's, part, it's partly yours too, right? You've been involved with this ministry, some of you 
from the very beginning. Some of you just recently because we hear from you as well. What a blessing though to be part of God's family. You know, he's captain of the ship. And as Mr. Danny uh, closed out the uh, first hour talking about being on the go, right? Mm -hmm. We all have something that we can do to share what Jesus has done for us. And that's awesome because then he blesses that. And then you know what? We encourage ourselves by sharing what God has done for us. Mm -hmm. So yeah. at yeah. times this time of year, holiday times, uh, can maybe be a little bit low. You feel a little bit down, but you know what? There's so much to thank the Lord for and there's so many good and positive things happening. But we talked about a number of different topics. Tell us again what we talked about first hour. We did. If you missed the first hour, you need to check it out on YouTube or you can go to 3abnplus.tv and you can watch it anytime. So make sure you catch that first hour. We talked about the goodness of God and everyday blessings in our lives and the miracles that God is doing in and through the team here. We talked about the promises of God and even the blessings that we can find through trials. Mm. So it was a power packed first hour. One of the things in the first hour, we did, um, did a role with our employees. Mm. These are some of the employees that you don't always get to see. And I love to feature them and just to see what God is doing in their mm, lives. Yeah, a lot and of they fun. shared things that they're thankful for. And yeah. I think we have another role of that. We too. do. We have one more and then one more. So we have three total, don't we? Yes. <laughs> yes. Plus some other managers and uh, those that have, are part of the ministry of 3BN. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to some of those roles here throughout this next hour or so. Mr. Danny, Dr. Yvonne, it's a blessing to be co-hosting with you on this special <laughs> Thanksgiving Day program. There are so many things to be thankful for. Yes. Uh, you know, when we think of the goodness of God, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we take so much for granted. Mm -hmm. And if we just take time to think about how, what he's done just mm -hmm. in one day That's right. in our lives, mm -hmm. it would be such a blessing. So mm -hmm. we love, of course, co-hosting with you and being here with mm -hmm. you and just praising the Lord with you because that's what this is all about. Right. It's all about praising God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thankful for, I was going to say, for all, all three of you mm -hmm. and uh, being in ministry together is an amazing thing. It is. And to have the same goals, same vision. Yes. And um, really what you see is what you get. These folks are what you see, what you get. They, mm -hmm. they love people. Uh, they're kind. And uh, God has blessed you both tremendously with mm -hmm. gifts. Mm -hmm. And I always think it's amazing that from the foundation of the world, he saw you too. Yeah. You know, there's a, Humble. there's a remnant Amazing. church and we're part there of the really remnant is. church and there's a ministry that he raised up and somebody has to be leading it here right before he comes back. And so before you were ever born, he knew you, yeah. knew right. what you would be doing. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. And we're so blessed to be here and we're just kind of on the holding up your hands now. You know, we used to be sitting in those chairs. We kind of like it at our age sitting here and holding up your hands and praying for you. And it's a blessing to work side by side in ministry. Yeah. You're absolutely right. And we we're talking about, you talked about just a couple of minutes ago, the employees here that you may see their names or hear about them or talk to them on the phone or yes. uh, correspondence through letters. And we're going to go to one of those roles that uh, feature some of our employees here at 3ABN. Let's go to that right now. I'm thankful for God, my wife, and my kids. Gracias a Dios por el trabajo. Gracias le doy a Dios por todas sus bendiciones, porque murió por nosotros en la cruz del Calvario y porque ha sido bueno con nosotros. I'm thankful to be able to work for God. Hey. I'm thankful for God's healing and for mercy. I'm thankful for God's mercy. Hello, I'm thankful for Jesus. I'm thankful for working with all of the ministries. I am thankful for my Heavenly Father's grace and mercy. I want to tell you I am so thankful for the way God has blessed 3ABN in prison ministries. What an awesome God we serve. You know, the last 10 months I've worked in prison ministries has really been a blessing. And I'm really thankful to be able to help change people's lives as they are trying to find a new life through Christ. You know, it's wonderful to look back on what God has done for us this year, his miracles and all the things he's gotten us through. It's gonna be one of those times when we look back and say, look where God has led us in the past and how we can trust him for the future. 
I'm thankful for still being able to worship God as we and study as we wish. And I'm thankful to be able to serve God here at 3ABN. I'm thankful for every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I'm thankful for God's redeeming love. Hi, I'm glad that, uh, that God is patient and hasn't given up on me yet. I'm thankful for family, and I'm thankful for you, our callers. Keep calling. Good day. My name is J.D. Quinn. I'm head of uh, pastoral ministries department here. One thing that I am so excited about and thankful about is second chances. I'm super thankful to be able to work here at 3ABN to use my talents for the Lord. Praise God for that. I'm thankful for my wife, my 3ABN family, and how God has been blessing me this entire year. Okay. Amen. <laughs> love that. Was fun. that. That's great. Love that. Mm -hmm. We saw from many different departments. I jotted down a few. I'm not sure if I got all of them, but production and pastoral prison ministry and pastoral department. We saw from engineering, master control, programming, dare to dream with Ricky Carter. Mm -hmm. So just very exciting to see those and see what they're thankful for. And we're so grateful for our three ABN family here and you at home as well. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We had Mr. John Biven just said, hey, <laughs> we had a good yeah, laugh. Yeah, we did. You know, he works so hard behind the scenes actually keeping 3 been on the air. Of course, Dr. Mo is the head of engineering, yes. but uh, John Biven, of course, works there under him. But yeah, we just appreciate every department here mm -hmm. and the role that each one of them plays. We're next going to be going to um, Pastor John Denzi and his wife, Idalia. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, they oversee 3ABN Latino, that network, and have done a great job. Mm -hmm. They have been here, Mr. Danny, from almost the very beginning. I know it's 30 plus yeah. years, mm -hmm. Pastor Johnny been here in Sister Idalia, and what topic are they going to be talking about? They're covering uh, the topic of loss. Mm, and you know, helpful. sometimes at Thanksgiving we think it's a time to be grateful, and it is. But some of you at home might be going through loss right now, mm. might have lost a spouse or a child. So this topic is especially pivotal at this time. Let's go to that role. One of the most difficult things that we as humans have to face is the loss of a loved one. And for some, it is an unexpected experience that you don't have time to prepare for from your perspective. But as uh, time goes on, you discover that the Lord was preparing you in some way. It's just that you did not see it when it was happening. Uh, so we lost uh, my brother-in-law because of COVID uh, a few months ago. And it was a devastating experience, a total shock to each and every member of the family. It sure was. I mean, loss is not an easy to topic to talk about, but I think it's therapeutical to see um, how the Lord has carried you through your loss. Also, when you share memories of your loved ones, my brother George was my third brother to pass away, so, but he was the closest one to me. And it's incredible how um, the Lord is your strength in the time of need. You're, the Lord is your, your, your comforter, your uh, fortress. Uh, because we don't know what to say when someone is so ill, yet we're praying for God's perfect will to be done and for us to accept God's will. God's plans are better than our plans. We would love to have our loved ones with us, you know, uh, all our life. We don't want to lose anyone, but the Lord knows the end from the beginning mm -hmm. and trusting in His merciful love uh, for each one of us, we accept that it was the best for my brother to pass away. And you'll say, what? <laughs> Why would that be best, right? Well, um, we've had the opportunity to minister to my brother, even though he was um, uh, intubated and he could not talk, mm -hmm. uh, he could hear. Yes. So I wanna give you an encouragement. Um, when people are sedated, they can hear. So. Yeah. And we know this because uh, another person yes. that mm -hmm. had been in COVID, had been intubated for about three months, mm -hmm. when he came out, he expressed I could hear everybody. Mm -hmm. I could hear what the doctor's saying, the nurse's saying, my 
And so, yes, it's true. Mm -hmm. So when we, when the Lord impressed my heart to call the hospital at 12.30 every night, I said, Lord, is this you telling me or this is one of my crazy uh, ways of coping with whatever's going on? So I chose to test the Lord. I said, okay, Lord, if this is you, you will open the way. So this was a way of comforting our family mm -hmm. through prayer, reading scripture, reading, sharing memories lived with my brother and um, singing, sing. singing some of the old songs yes. that he loved. Yeah, sometimes it was still 3.30 in the morning and I would be singing and talking with my brother, so which was great. Now, why do I smile yet I have tears? Well, we still miss him. Yeah. You will miss your loved ones. That is so real and you know, that separation, God knows what you're going through. So this is not something strange. It's just the part of life after sin. This was not God's design for us to shed tears. Whether it's loss of a friendship, loss of a loved one in death or loss of your home or whatever it is, we are so emotionally involved in, yes. in whatever's, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I praise the Lord that through His Word, not only it was to comfort and strengthen my brother, but also it strengthened our faith. Yes. It rejoiced our heart and wow, how sweet it is to cry out to the Lord, crying and broken, but yet soothing, mm -hmm. if you could understand that. Well, you know, uh, <clears throat> during those times that uh, we were in the phone call, because they, the nurse would put the phone by his ear, um, it was, it was uh, inspiring to hear uh, you, your mom, and some friends just encouraging George, hang in there, the Lord loves you, you know, give your heart to the Lord. And it was an inspiring experience. You, you, you felt inspired and refreshed and your faith strengthened. And yes, we were praying for healing, but then at the same time, we we're uh, asking the Lord to do what is best, do what is best for George. And George uh, uh, was a person that you could easily love. He, could, he was an engaging person. You just met him and he would talk to you and you felt like you knew him for a long time. And if you were with George, you're either gonna smile a lot or laugh <laughs> because the, he was an engaging person to talk to. And what a blessing to know that uh, he had the opportunity to give his heart to the Lord. Guess what? Yes. what do you think about that? Well, I'm glad that you mentioned that because I want to tell you that my brother did leave um, going to church and, and he did not serve the Lord the way that we see that, you know, that proves that he was, you know, going to church and doing the, the usual, right? But my brother loved the Lord. And I know because we would sit and argue about different Bible topics and he had his Bible marked. Well, when we would visit and all, I, it, it's incredible how um, he continued to play the hymns on his piano, right. singing songs <laughs> and all. So I just want you to know that don't give up, you know. There is hope in Christ and it's true. It's, you can feel it. And when we had the chance of worshiping with them, I know Danny and Yvonne will be, yes, I know, because they were there with us at those times. One, Pastor Lomeca yeah. and so many other people that, um, that knew my brother and loved my brother. But I want you to know, don't give up hope. I mean, only God knows the end from the beginning. God heals from the inside out, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and then physically. Um, and some may say, how do you know that? Well, in my heart, it tells me one that cannot move because of their condition, but their spirituality is not where it should be. God gives you that last moment opportunity to surrender your life to the Lord, to accept His forgiveness, to accept His love for you and for you yourself to forgive yourself, right? And accept the life eternal that is a gift from the Lord. So I thank God for the plan of salvation. Yes, and so we can say that uh, the Lord will be your strength. Uh, during that time, I saw the Lord strengthen my wife, my mother-in-law, and prepare them for that moment when we received the news. George, 
his heart stopped at such and such a time. And there was a, a, a time of sorrow. There was a time of sorrow, but then a time of understanding. He said, peace. The Lord gives and, and we the will Lord see takes. him again. The Lord gives and the Lord takes. Blessed be the Lord. Amen. So uh, stay close to the Lord during the happy times and especially during the most difficult times. He is there with you. Amen. Wow. Amen. 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 How beautiful mm. that is, isn't it? Yes. Through loss, I, I know in our family we've experienced so much loss over the past couple of years. And what they were saying really resonates with, with us and our family. But there's a scripture that I want to share. Isaiah 57, mm. verses 1 and 2. The righteous perishes and no man takes it to heart. Merciful men are taken away while no one considers that the righteous is taken away from evil. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. Mm -hmm. So we don't know why things happen. We don't know why people go to sleep when they do, but we can trust mm -hmm. that our God, if they, if they knew the Lord, they will be resurrected and we will be able to be with them forever, Amen. for eternity. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. loss is just temporary, yeah. but we have eternity. So think about the resurrection yeah. because we have to, we can't sorrow like others who have no hope. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Johnny and Idalia, for yeah. the hope that you just shared with Amen. us. Absolutely. You know, and Psalm says, precious in the sight of the Lord or wow. the death of his saints. Mm -hmm. So once again, we've been talking about the big picture. Mm -hmm. When you look at the big picture that God loved each and every one of us mm -hmm. enough mm -hmm. that when he gave his only begotten son, as I've quoted a while ago, that none of us should perish but have everlasting life. So when we look at it, we're all, we're all born sinners and we'll all have a terminal illness called right. death. Mm -hmm. But through the Lord Jesus Christ, Death is nothing. Right. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Grave, where is thy, you know? Wow. Yeah. No, mm. the victory is in the Lord Jesus mm. Christ. So Amen. no matter what's happening around you, stay encouraged, stay close to the word, yes. read the word of God, continue to pray. God has great and mighty plans for you and that's to be in heaven. Amen. Amen. Wow, Amen. so powerful. It is. Mm. Uh, thank you so much, Denzies. We love the day. Oh, we do. We do. We do. Absolutely. We pray for you, I know, during that time of loss, and we pray for you at home as well. I was mm. just reflecting as they were talking. A few months ago, we had a precious six-year-old girl come here to 3ABN with part of Make-A-Wish. Mm -hmm. She was dying. Mm. She had a brain tumor. She had cancer. And she came here to 3AB and I'll never forget meeting her mom and her grandma and the precious little girl. And she recorded with Aunt Francine with Kids Network mm. and Grandma Joyce Neal with Grandma's House. Just a few weeks ago, she passed away. Mm. Greg and I watched the funeral service there, actually at Pastor Doug Bachelor's Church in Granite Bay. Mm -hmm. And the mother spoke at her daughter's funeral and she made a passionate plea mm. to accept Jesus mm. and mm. to, it was incredible. The young children who came to the funeral to come forward and they did, mm. you could see them in the audience. And so to see that this world is not all there is, mm. that right. we have hope of eternity and to know that no matter what you're going through, that Jesus is right by your side. And soon and very soon, this world of sin and sickness will be over. Amen. Amen. And we'll be Praise forever Amen. with Amen. Jesus in eternity. Yes. Yes. Speaking of that faith yes. and trust, Amen. we're going to Brian Day, who is our Praise Him Music Network General Manager. Just stepped in that role a couple months ago. He's doing a great job. His wife, Stephanie, is assisting him. And they're mm -hmm. going to be talking about faith and trust. Oh, yeah, what a fantastic topic. And again, we love the uh, days and of course all the employees here. We love you at home. So let's go to that role right now. Every Thanksgiving provides an opportunity for us to reflect on God's goodness. Um, oftentimes we think that Thanksgiving is all about coming around, visiting family, gathering to eat. And those are great things, you know, to be with family certainly and, and to eat good food uh, is a blessing. But at the end of the day, uh, Thanksgiving, the root word, thanks, and of course, giving thanks to God is what it's all about to me. And uh, I'm just privileged and honored to every year be able to reflect on His goodness and how faithful He has been to us. And it also begs the question, uh, you know, how was my faith towards Him? And uh, Stephanie has a beautiful story to tell about that. When I heard of faith and trust, 
I thought of this story for some reason, so I decided to share it. It says, there was a severe drought some years ago in the northern part of England. The situation became so severe that if it would not rain within a week, the crops would be totally lost. Due to this urgent need, it was decided to have a special prayer service for rain in one of the local churches. As the minister of the congregation was approaching the church, he saw a little girl ahead of him carrying an umbrella. He caught up with the girl and asked her, my little girl, why are you carrying an umbrella to church on such a hot day? Turning and looking into his face, the girl answered, we're going to ask God to send rain today. I want to be ready. The minister testified in his sermon that the faith of this girl put him to shame. Mm. I want to have that kind of faith, you know. This past year for us uh, was something a little challenging. Um, you know, I, I was blessed to be able to work here at the school for four years. And it got to the point that it was just becoming a little too much for me and my health. Mm -hmm. So I had to make that decision. And that was something that we had kind of struggled with of, we're gonna go down to one income. Can I step out in faith, right? And make that move right. when I'm not really comfortable to do that. I just reflect over these last eight months. You know, we really did make it through with that one income, but you know, now God has even blessed even further because we're able to work together in ministry here at 3ABN. So just God is able to work everything out. You know, he really does never fail. Right. <laughs> and so it just reminded me of this story, like sometimes we have to take those moves when we're not really, you know, 100%. Amen. You know, they're one of the most incredible texts in all of Scripture, uh, shortest text, but most profound text in all the Bible is 1 John chapter 4, verse 19, which says, we love him because he first loved us. And I, I, when I think of that text, I also think about the fact that, you know what, God has always been faithful. He, his faithfulness to us never fails. One of my favorite songs, great is thy faithfulness, because he truly is there for us. And so I want to return that to him. I want to be faithful to him. But when I see his faithfulness and how good he's been to us, he's never failed us. Our trust builds in him. And so just reflecting on that, Lord, I want to trust in you more. And sometimes God says, you know what? I'm going to step out. I'm going to show you who I am so that you can trust in me more. Because that's all God wants. That's all that the Bible is all about, is God constantly begging and pleading for his children to trust in him. So faith and trust go together. God steps out first. We love him because he first loved us and he shows his faithfulness to us. And so now we return that faith because of his faithfulness and then in, in turn our, our trust builds in him. And so, you know, Proverbs chapter three, verses five and six, it's always one of my favorite texts. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he, he will, will direct, direct your path. path. And so just stepping out in faith and saying, Lord, I'm gonna trust in you, not in my own way, but in you. And uh, man, it reminds me of one of my favorite songs uh, by one of my favorite gospel songwriters, uh, Andre Crouch. He wrote this song many years ago and it's called Through It All. Oh, when I think back over the years of my life and how for all the 33 years of my life, God has never failed me. I can trust in Him to be the God that He says He's going to be and to do the things that He says He's going to do. We're living proof of it. And so that song, Through It All, I love it because it says, Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon His Word. And that's it. That's the story. That's the gospel story. His faithfulness and His love drives us to step out in faith and say, Lord, I trust in You. I trust in You to be the God in my life that You said You're going to be and that You want to be. 
if only we would just trust in Him. So I just, you know, my encouragement to everyone during this season of Thanksgiving is just stop and pause. Yes, be with family. Yes, gather around the dinner table and have a good meal. But more than anything, stop and pause. Be still and know that He is God and reflect on His goodness because you wouldn't be where you are. You wouldn't have what you have and you would not be in the position that you are, good or bad, if God had not been there for you. Sometimes we experience trials, yes, but it's through those trials that we build faith, we build perseverance. We build, yes, trust in Him because God never fails. That's why 1 Corinthians 13 reminds us that love never fails and God is love. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Yes. I mean, th these testimonies are incredible. They are. And I'm so thankful for uh, Ryan and Stephanie and I'm looking at it, Greg at the young leadership mm -hmm. that we have here with a number of the folk and, and it's it's for us being older to look and say, you know, God had this ministry, you know, mm -hmm. all along in each of these people God is bringing just when he needs needs them and they're standing up. And yes. so I'm so thankful Amen. for people who love Jesus, who love the ministry, they love you, they're praying for you and they're willing to go and their testimonies of, of trust and Oof. faith mm. and hope. I mean, this has got to be encouraging. I mean, talk about Thanksgiving. <laughs> We're having it right now. Amen. We are. What a Amen. Amen. I just loved, I loved, first of all, when Ryan sings. I just, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, what a blessing just to throw that in Waiting on him there. to finish it. I know, yeah. I know. And then, and then Stephanie being so transparent. And yes. I just mm. think it's beautiful. You know, this, our three ABM family to me is just so special because mm -hmm. we're serious about, and it's not, it's not us. It's mm -hmm. what God is doing right. through us. But I'm just so grateful for right. our three ABM mm -hmm. family. Amen. Speaking yeah. of young leadership, we're going to Jason Bradley. Yay. Oh, yes. He is the general right. manager of three ABM's Dare to Dream Network. We love Jason. He's an integral part of the team. Oh, He's talking about peace. Mm -hmm. Great topic. You know, God's done marvelous things in his life. Mm -hmm. too. And so what a blessing. And you're right. What a great topic. You know, at times with turmoil and stuff in the world, he may not have peace. So Jason Bradley is going to talk to us about peace. Let's go to that right now. You know, it's no secret why Thanksgiving is my absolute favorite holiday. Uh, one, I absolutely love the food. Um, but two, I get to spend time with family and, and just get that real good fellowship. And what I've noticed is it's very peaceful. It's a very peaceful experience. And peace is defined as um, freedom from disturbance. Uh, but when I think about peace from a spiritual perspective, I don't think about peace as uh, being the absence of disturbances. I think of peace as being a, a response, our response to those circumstances. How we respond to those circumstances make all the difference. And how we respond is a reflection of who we serve. So when we have Christ in our, our, our life. Uh, we respond in a manner, we should respond in a way that reflects Him in a positive light. I think of so many stories that can be found in, in the Bible. We'll start with the disciples for one. The disciples were in the boat with Jesus and they were traveling, they were trying to cross the lake. The wind and waves were crazy and the disciples were fearful and uh, they really lacked that faith. They had the physical presence of Jesus in their boat, but they didn't realize who they had in their boat. And as a result of that, they, they, their faith was diminished at the moment and they were, they were scared and Jesus was sleeping peacefully and the disciples were panicked. Jesus woke up, he calmed, calmed the wind and the waves and everything, and uh, then he looked at the disciples and said, oh, why such little faith? You know, peace exists in the presence of the Lord. I remember when I was about 19 years old, or, or around 20, and uh, I nearly died. My appendix ruptured, and uh, when my appendix ruptured, I was misdiagnosed and they sent me home twice. The third time I went to see my doctor, he happened to be in the office that day, and God had him there. And he ran another test and he told my dad to take me to the emergency room right away. 
You see, my appendix had ruptured and it sealed off my intestines and they were about to go next. So they had to perform an emergency procedure. I, I want you to remember though that I just said that peace exists in the presence of the Lord. You see, I wasn't walking with the Lord at that time. I was uh, in a place of sin. I had uh, gone down the wrong path and I was going in the opposite direction of the Lord. So I didn't have that peace. Um, so as I was headed down that, that path, I was laying in that hospital bed and I was withering away skin and bones. Uh, and I remember laying there and praying and saying, God, if you, if you get me out of this, I'll change. I'll do something different. God, the wonderful God that he is, got me out of that situation, but I had a case of blessing amnesia when I was returned to my uh, normal self and I was able to move around and uh, all of those things and I failed him and I didn't surrender to him I didn't give my heart to him uh, fast forwarding through time uh, a couple years later I'd say probably around the age of 29 or 30 uh, sometime when I was here at 3ABN uh, I had to undergo another surgery and that surgery was uh, kind of as a result of the previous surgery that I had when my appendix ruptured you see all the scar tissue and everything had to be cleaned up it was attached to my liver and small intestine and was creating uh, problems for me and causing pain I, I got that surgery but I noticed that there was a difference I noticed that I had peace because I had been spending time in the presence of the Lord and that's something that we can't emphasize. I can't emphasize that enough, the importance of spending time in the presence of the Lord. Because even though, you know, you, you spend time in the presence of the Lord, when you stop spending time in the presence of the Lord, you can fall and you can fall short. And in those moments, you lack that peace. That peace goes away. So I think about you know, uh, the, that time when I had that surgery and the difference between the two. And I'm just amazed at how great God is. Peace and faith are so closely intertwined. I like to think of faith as the ability to tolerate uncertainty while trusting in God. And in order to have that peace, we need to trust in God. And that, that trust should lead to us and that love should lead to us obeying God. And in that obedience, in that faithfulness to God, man, it's so, so peaceful. I never want to be outside of the will of God. I never want to be outside of the presence of God. Because once you experience that peace, it's a, a transformational uh, experience that I can't even accurately convey to you today. But you have to experience it for yourself. Just like at Thanksgiving, when you're eating that delicious dinner, you don't want to watch your family members eat that dinner. You want to taste and see that it is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good and experience the peace and the joy that he has for you. <laughs> Amen. 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 Uh, praise the Lord. What do you think, Mom? Oh, you know, you know me, I'm fighting the tears, right? <laughs> because as I watch, I, you know, I was there with him when he had the appendectomy. And uh, well, actually I was, he was in Atlanta and I was in Dallas, but right away I flew out there. So mm. right after he had the surgery, I was there and I just felt like the Lord was giving him yeah. a wake up call mm -hmm. because he wasn't walking with the Lord. And then to see where God has brought him and to mm. see what God has done in his life. God is so faithful. Yes. And I just want to tell you mothers there, and I've said it before, but for those of you whose children are not walking with the Lord, don't give up. Mm. Keep praying for them. Keep lifting them up before God. God wants to save them and he will, mm -hmm. he, he will save them. If you keep standing in the gap, if they will yield to him, mm. he will save them. So 
please don't give up. Be encouraged. Know that God has a plan for your children mm. and he will not give up. So don't you. Mm. She's yeah. continued to pray for them for years for her sons. Yeah. Now she literally has a list that's so long that every day <laughs> nieces, nephews, friends, wow. you know, yeah. our kids, everybody's on this list and she's very serious and so are we about it. But I love what he's saying. You know, great peace have they which mm. love thy law. Mm. The, Jesus, the Bible tells us and nothing shall offend them. In other words, nothing shall discourage them. If we love Jesus, that's it. Mm -hmm. JD said it earlier and we've said it for a long time. When you read the back of the book, yep. it says we win. <laughs> that's so right. We should have great peace about that. Amen. Amen. And you notice how he started and ended with food. With food. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, that's right. He loves food. He loves food. He he loves food. food. You know Jason's a foodie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to one more role from the employees. So let's Good. do that right now. Oh, hi. We're so thankful for many things, but I am so thankful that I have a new assistant in the Kids Network. And I'm thankful for this opportunity to work with Aunt Francine at the Kids Network. We want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Okay, I'm thank you for opportunity to work for 3 and, and for God. Hello, what am I thankful for? I am so thankful for the Word of God. I've been studying Proverbs lately, and I just love that. The first, second, and third chapters talking about wisdom. I encourage you to start your new year with that and have a good Thanksgiving. And the other thing, the thing I'm thankful for, I am so thankful for my new position. I'm having such fun doing that. Semi-retired, you know. Have a good holiday with your family. I am thankful for my fiancé. I'm thankful for one year of marriage. I'm thankful to uh, be able to work here at 3ABN in the maintenance and grounds department. It's like really working in the vineyard and uh, enjoy working here every day, making this place look delightful and appealing and inviting to all who come to 3ABN. Hi, I'm thankful for God answering prayers in his own time. In. And the reason I say that is I prayed for my husband that wasn't Christian for 11 years. And after 11 years, my husband gave his life to the Lord. And um, he was serving in the military, and after he served in the military, he went to serve the Lord. And the Lord sent us here to 3ABN. And after the Lord sent us here, he also sent my, um, my mom, my sister and her family, um, and my daughter that she's like, I never can find a husband here in the um, cows and the cornfields. But lo and behold, she's married to the audio guy, Ben. And me and my family are so thankful for Ben. We love Ben. And now my husband is enrolled in AFCO. And see, even though it took 11 years in God's time, and he answered our prayers. So I'm thankful for God and the way he answers prayers in his time. And thank you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. What a blessing again. Yeah. Our employees are a lot of fun. Isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> yes, see that was great. Some of the behind the scenes. And what a blessing again. We appreciate each one of them. And we appreciate you, of course, our family at home. We have another role we want to go to, and this is uh, Pastor John Loma King and his wife, Angela. They're our pastors here at the Thompsonville Seventh-day Adventist Church. And what a blessing this couple is. They're yes. on fire for the Lord. Pastor John and Angie are all about evangelism. Always, yeah. a, mm -hmm. always a blessing to uh, be with them and to work with them. And uh, we just appreciate them so very much. We do. We love Pastor Amen. John and Angie. They've mentored us greatly. Oh, and yes. they're talking about relationships, okay. but also talking about relationships with loneliness. And how do we deal with loneliness at the time of the holidays? Mm -hmm. You know, I think about loneliness. Uh, we talked about this. Yeah, we did. You know, I think about those of you that are facing this season, having to deal with something called loneliness. And I want to begin, there's a story I heard about a tree. I followed a photographer, not so much followed him as an ardent follower, but I, I was captured by his uh, pictures that he put on, on his website, and all the pictures were of trees standing by themselves, mm. lonely, lonely trees. A large landscapes, uh, no mountains, no houses, no other trees. Wow. And I read some of the captions, and he said, trees that stand alone have deep roots. Wow. And I want to talk about that as we look at this first, this first scripture. Okay. Uh, what do you think about those pictures of lonely trees, deep roots? And we've been to the 
forests where we've seen a lot of deep rooted trees that and are standing in Africa, by Africa, things like that, places like that, way out in the bush, you see a tree just standing alone. That's right. And you think, how is it getting its sustenance? That's right. Yeah. And, and, and I also heard that those are the trees that uh, they're there, some of them for 80 years, some more than 100 years, yes. some hundreds of years. They've, they've survived the winds of life, the storms of life, the rains of life, the torrential weather patterns of life. And, and the author or the person that took all these pictures of the trees says, one thing that's true about all of them is their roots are deep. So let me encourage you, while you may be dealing with loneliness this time of year, a time where people want to be around family and friends, and you know, the moments vary. It does. Uh, there are people that are lonely, but they're still younger. Yeah. There are people that are lonely, but they're older now. Yeah, true. And there are students that are away at school, and they don't have the money to go home. So mm -hmm. <laughs> we've been there. And so they are there at the school, and where do they go? What do they do? So I mean, it's not just that. old people. I mean, you, you're talking about an experience you had. <laughs> yeah, where we had to go to someone's home for Thanksgiving. So it's not just old people struggle with loneliness. Mm. Young people do too. And uh, in spite of the loneliness, there's a scripture that shouts at me in 1 Thessalonians 5.18. It says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And I thought, how do you give God thanks in lonely moments? Mm. And uh, the answer that I came up with, it may vary from person to person, you may have a different answer. The answer that I came up with was, thank God that I'm not always lonely. And seasons tend to compound loneliness. Oh yeah. You know, you think of family members that used to be there, uh, loved ones that are now deceased. And uh, the reality of it is we can't change the past, but we can, we have some hand in designing our future. Amen. And so I want to encourage some of you, uh, you know, you can't change. I've lost two mothers and two fathers. You may know my story of abandonment and being raised by other people, but um, I've learned to adjust with no parents now to come to those lonely moments where we want to look for a parent and realize they're not there. And then I choose to design that moment to not be lonely. What do you say? That's true. I mean, we've been through, you could be, married and still be lonely. We've talk, spoke to people that are married and yet they're still lonely. Thank mm. God it's not us because we talk all the time. That's right. Yeah, but you could be lonely in a home. You could have children and still be lonely. It's, mm. it's very strange, but yeah. Because especially if they're adult children, I mean, you know, older and they're in high school age and they're do, hanging out with their friends. Or the empty nest syndrome. Or the empty nest, the, yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. And the Lord gave me this when we were talking about yeah. what to say. This came to my mind that I want to leave with you or that I want you to ponder. Loneliness is a memory of what was, not a forecast of what will be. Loneliness is a memory of what was, not a forecast of what will be. That means, you know, the, the things that are behind you, you can't change any of them. No. And so if you want to thank God for anything, thank Him for the fact that circumstances uh, can be altered. We talk about some of the ways of taking this lonely season and designing it. Yeah. Like you talked about some of the places, going out to restaurants. What are some of the right. other things you talked about? <laughs> yeah, some people could do a Zoom Thanksgiving wow. with their family. Mm -hmm. You know, your family's away and and you want to connect with them. You could connect them, connect with them through social media. And you can have dinner together. You can have your dinner. They have their dinner. That's you can true. plan it. Never Say, let's that. have dinner at four o'clock. You, you know, you plan yours and plan mine. We just eat and have dessert and laugh and talk. Those, <laughs> there's so many various ways you can do that. That's like a digital Thanksgiving. It's like a digital thanks, but you're not alone. Yeah, and also yeah. you can make treats or bake goods or pies and give to your neighbors and. Just say here, just leave a little note at their door and just say, here's a little treat for you. So there's various ways you can do that. You know, I never thought about that. In this age where we are so connected, mm. uh, it doesn't make sense to say, well, I refuse to be involved in other people's life. And you may not be on social media, you may just have television. Uh, that's why we're bringing these messages to you here at 3AB and to encourage you that uh, loneliness is a reality, but it's a feeling that can be remedied by choosing what you want for yourself. Uh, when I faced my first Christmas without my dad many years ago, remember I was going over to the phone, oh, actually yeah. New Year's Eve, I was going to the phone to say Happy New Year, 
only realizing halfway when you said, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to call, and I realized in a tearful moment yeah. that he was no longer there. Some of you may be in those moments where mom is not there, somebody's deceased, yeah. you're older, you cannot get out. But do what you can in your sphere of influence to just change the way uh, life brings you, because we do have options. I mean, think of some of the options. We have, uh, some people have more family than just a loved one that was deceased. We have friends. Yes. Sometimes, even if we're in a care facility, we have friends that are down the hall or right next door. Mm -hmm. Church family. We have church family. Uh, you have neighbors. Uh, you have acquaintances. And, um, but you can choose to adopt loneliness or you can focus on what is missing. Yeah. But I would recommend that you focus on who's not missing yeah. and what you can do and recognize these wonderful promises in the Word of God. Yeah. Here are two of those that just come to my mind when I think about loneliness. Yeah. And there are times, and there was some very rare times that you were in Florida with your mom, I was in New York with my dad, yeah. and we'd say happy holidays over the I phone. Know. It's like you want to reach out and touch. And we just missed each other. Mm -hmm. And that's why we do everything together. Everything. <laughs> but here's some scriptures yes. that you can take to heart that will, that will bring the promises of God home to you. Here's one that I know you've heard before, but it fits this time of year. Hebrews 13, 5, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's right. Amen. That's a promise that we can all embrace and say, Lord, thank you that even in my silent moments, you are the uninvited guest. Mm. And we pray that you could by faith reach out and feel the presence of God there with you. The meal may be one you're eating by yourself, but you're not eating alone. And then Psalm 34, verse 18, the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. Loneliness and broken hearts sometimes go together, but God is the healer of broken hearts yes. and the one by His presence that can change every lonely moment. So on the behalf of the Loma Kings, we want to say Happy Thanksgiving. Can we say it together? Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And may the God who never leaves us remedies the loneliness of your heart. Amen. 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 Thank you, John and Angie. Yes. Great words. Yes. Uh, it reminds me of Sister Mae Chung, who mm. I love like she was my second mother, board member for so many years. Her husband was killed in a plane crash in 74. Wow. And for many, many years, she was by herself. She never, she chose never to be married again. And she traveled by herself around the world. And I remember saying to her, Mom, don't you, I called her mom. I said, Mom, don't, don't you ever get lonely? And she said, no, I'm too busy to be lonely. And, <laughs> and I said, but, but I mean, you're traveling by yourself around the world. And she said, what do you mean? She said, I have the best companion you can ever have. Mm -hmm. oh. I have Jesus. Mm -hmm. So she said, wow. I never get lonely. So, mm -hmm. and from a spiritual sense, being lonely is a choice. Mm -hmm. And I, I knew that she had such a peace about her. She never talked about anything well, she just said, I'm, I'm never lonely because mm. I've got the best companion ever. Amen. Mm. Amen. 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 This is a, 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 an interesting time of year because it's kind of paradoxical because on the one hand, mm. you know, you celebrate and you're happy. And then on the other hand, this is, there's so many people who are lonely, who are depressed, who are feeling as though no one loves them, but know that Jesus loves you. Know that we love you. We pray for you. Yeah. And, and so that we can give thanks even in our loneliness. We can give right. thanks. There's a verse in the Bible that says, the Lord puts the solitary in families. That's right. Mm. And so consider us your family and mm -hmm. you know, you can write to us and we're, we, we do pray for you and we do want you to know that you are loved. Yes, mm. Mm. Amen. amen. Those are gentlemen that, and you may be uh, listening, watching today that reached out. He's in his 90s and he is basically cannot see. He says he's blind, mm. but he still reaches out, reaches out to other people, mm. reaches out to the ministry of 3ABN and, and is so encouraging every time you talk with this gentleman. So, you know, you're right. We mm. can all reach out no matter what we're dealing with. And when mm -hmm. we reach out, we encourage, of course, um, ourselves too. So praise the Lord, we can always look to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Speaking of looking to Jesus, we're going to the next topic is salvation. It's good. Mm. I love that. Jeff and Charlotta Dore. Jeff, of course, is 3ABM Planned Giving and Trust Services Director, and his wife, Charlotta, assists him. They're a powerful mm. couple. Yeah. We love them, and they're doing a great job there. And they're going to talk to us about salvation. Charlotta, do you remember where we were at about 20 years ago? Yes, we were uh, discovering some new truths thanks to Three Angels Broadcasting Network. I praise the Lord for 
the people that donated and continue to donate for this ministry because that's how I was blessed to discover a truth about the Bible, truths that I had never heard before. And I shared them with my husband. Yes. And we- Which was a little bit of a challenge at times. <laughs> she found the message much before I did. And she would, and how that occurred is one night she couldn't sleep and she got up and started putting a puzzle together and just was randomly going through the TV and found 3ABN and just left it on, was putting a puzzle together and Lyle Albrecht come on. And boy, does he preach the message. So she took and listened to him and then she got up every night consecutively after that for a long period of time, just watching out Lyle Albrecht and 3ABN. And it took several times before you ever heard who or what message it was that was not even telling about the Advent message. I hadn't, or maybe I missed something where he had said that he was an Adventist, but uh, it was so intriguing, this message, because uh, I've been to church, my husband went to church, and yet these were things coming from the Bible. I remember I got my Bible, I thought, this is incredible, this is fascinating. and. Uh, it, it really touched my heart because there were many times when I was going to church that I did not understand the message because I would think I didn't, didn't get that out of that passage that the preacher was talking about today. But I'm not a theologist, you know, or, or, or anything that studies the, the scriptures, so I thought I just didn't understand. But as I kept watching 3ABN, and listening, I thought, oh my goodness, this is all adding up and making sense, and it's so simple to understand. So I'm so thankful that we were given the opportunity to learn the truth, because uh, there are many people that are in Babylon, just like we were, and they don't realize it. Some may, and they are having a hard time maybe coming out because they don't know how they can handle the situation. And it was not easy for us. Oh, no. You know, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. And that, that verse is even special for us because our middle daughter went to a Christian school and they learned a Bible verse for each letter of the alphabet. So Romans 3.23 was the first and, well, oh my goodness, we recited that many, many times through the years. Yes, and, and it stuck with me all my life. and. I think about that continuously and the, the memories of giving our children the opportunity to go to a Christian school when they were young because it helped us to develop as well as our children. But uh, our message today is about salvation. salvation. Yes, and as Charlotta was saying, I was not really prepared to take and accept the message whenever she did. She was more of a seeker in biblical theology and was not satisfied. We, she was of one denomination and I was of another. And we kind of split going to church between the two. And um, I just was going to church because it was where she was going and trying to take and be a good husband at the time. But you know, our business was uh, very involved and Saturday was the main day for us to conduct business. So whenever she started talking to me about it, we was taking long walks and she would start giving me a little bit of this at a time. And it was, I was going, yes, okay, okay. And um, eventually it, I was intrigued and I started watching with her. And um, I started getting convicted. And that's only the Holy Spirit that can do that. But, you know, you can't take and change and accept it if the Holy Spirit's not there with you. So we did uh, our business, a family business, and we didn't take and weren't greeted with open arms. We were being chastised. They didn't care for it. They, they thought, my goodness, what kind of a religion have you guys chose to go? Well, we're following the Lord, our, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And salvation is a gift that only He can give you. And all you have to do is ask. It was the greatest gift ever given by mankind. And it was purchased by His blood on the cross at Calvary. So it, if you're sinning or you're having a lifestyle that's not pleasing to Him, all you have to do is say the sinner's prayer 
and say, Lord, please save me, take away my sins. And he is just and he will do that. But you're not going to take it. It's not an easy path. Life has its challenges. And every time I start drawing closer to the Lord, I get challenged harder and harder and attacked more and more. So if you're not having any challenges or not being attacked, there's a good chance that your path with the Lord is not too close. So I think challenges come with being a Christian because Christ, if you know, he didn't take and have a life that was free of challenges. So folks, I can just say that uh, it's been a tremendous journey that we've been on the last 20 years. Never in our wildest dreams did we ever think that we would take and be a Seventh-day Adventist. I don't think either one of us really knew much about or even knew a Seventh-day Adventist. But we know several now and we're very blessed, very thankful. And we're so thankful that there are many people in the world that support this ministry because it gives everybody the opportunity to know the truth that is preached from the Word, the Bible. And we pray and hope that it will continue until the Lord comes. We want everyone to realize that, you know, salvation is a free gift from our Lord and Savior. And it is a gift for everyone. You just have to ask Him to come into your heart and to obey. And it could be difficult at times to obey, but God will give you the grace and He will give you the mercy and you can yes. receive Him through faith and He will be your guide light until the time of the end comes. And we, we pray that oh, yes. this Thanksgiving, Maybe. as everyone gets together, together for the holidays. Your family and friends, yes. That, that they will draw closer to the Lord and be thankful that we have been given such a wonderful gift of salvation from our Lord and Savior. Yes, enjoy the, enjoy the holiday. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday where all of our family gets together. So family and friends and good food. So happy <laughs> Thanksgiving. And I want to thank you again, the viewers, because there are people like the, this couple mm -hmm. all over the United States and around the world, thousands and thousands That's right. who've come to the knowledge of Christ because of your sacrifice mm -hmm. and your giving and your prayers and support of mm -hmm. financial support of 3ABN. So mm -hmm. thank you for that. What a great testimony. These are wonderful people and such an intricate mm -hmm. part of 3ABN today. Mm -hmm. I love hearing the stories of yeah, people who have too. come to the, mm -hmm. to the Lord through 3ABN. It's so encouraging because when we're doing these programs, you know, we don't know who's listening on by radio or watching on television, but we know that the Lord's word is going out and mm -hmm. his word will, um, will not return unto him void, but will accomplish that which he pleases. So mm -hmm. we can trust that you know, the, the word that's going out is accomplishing what God wants it to do. And it's because you are helping. Amen. If you didn't Amen. support this ministry, we couldn't do the work. Mm -hmm. So we work together, we partner together and praise God for all the people who are coming <laughs> to the Lord through 3ABN. It's a mm -hmm. blessing. Amen. 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 Totally agree. Yeah, it's an incredible blessing. Like you mentioned, you know, God just asked us to put the word out there. He asked you at home also. You don't just sit back like Mr. Danny said and do nothing. Do something because God has a reason and a purpose for you to be here on this earth and you can make a difference. And I think in heaven, Mr. Danny, Dr. Yvonne, Jill, it's going to be incredible, right? Yeah. We're going to realize the full impact in you at home for the money that you give, the prayers that you pray for 3ABN mm -hmm. and your loved ones. You will know the full impact in heaven. Amen. Amen. We're going to be going next to, and this is our, our, our one of our last rules. This is our last rule, and this is from Bruce and Jackie Farley. Now, Mr. Bruce Farley, he is chairman of our board. Mm -hmm. You guys have been friends and buddies Great for a people. long time. Oh, Great people. Great folks for a mm. long, long time, 30 yeah. plus years. Yes, yeah. long time uh, supporters of the ministry of 3ABN. Yeah. They're on the topic talking about praising God. Let's go to that role now. Praise is a very interesting part of my life. I knew that I was supposed to praise God for good things but I never understood that praising God for the bad things that happen on earth is important also. It's very important. Um, I was listening to a, a man speak maybe 30 years ago and he'd been sick. And he said, you gotta praise God for everything, even your sickness. And it was kind of a big meeting and I thought, they got to get that guy off the stage because he's 
He's not speaking truth. You can't praise God for bad stuff. And uh, fast forward about 15 years, I uh, found myself in 2008 going through a divorce, a financial business deal that was going terribly wrong, and uh, I got diagnosed with throat cancer. I kind of had the trifecta of things going on. And it was a, a very painful time in my life. And uh, after treatment one day, I was heading back to my bed. And I remembered that guy um, encouraging us many years before about praising God for the bad things. And I didn't have much, uh, I didn't have any other options. Let me put it that way. I, I was pretty desperate for some help and some relief. And I remember that guy talking and I uh, knelt down on the floor and I raised my hands to the Lord and I, I said, Father, I want to thank you and praise your name for divorce, financial problems, and throat cancer. And, uh, you know, the peace of Jesus came over me at that point. And I thought, wow, that guy had something. He was on to something. I went on to bed, and that got me on a cycle of praising God for whatever happens in my life. And, uh, and how many times have we had that opportunity to praise God for, for the good things that go on in our life and also the, the tragedies that may come to us or, or the heartaches? You know, God's always there for us. He's always there to protect us, to guide us, if I would just listen to him. And um, sometimes that's the hardest part, is remembering that that's the voice of God. So. Yeah. And being thankful and praising and being thankful, I, I know when you praise God, especially for the, the bad things in your life, the, the trials that come your way, when you praise Him for that, for me, it, it, I'm telling Him, I trust you with whatever's happening. Mm -hmm. And when I'm telling Him I trust Him, it's going into my heart, my mind, my, my subconscious, my inner being, my higher power, which is my choice. It, it's affirming my belief in the Creator God and my trust and my praise and my thanksgiving in Him. It does. And I think thanking God for the little things, I'm always losing my car keys. And He always directs me to where they were. Where was the last time I had those keys? So God's there for the little things. And when you remember to thank God for the little things, you, were, you thank Him for the big things too. It's, the big things are very important, but the little things, yeah, we're encouraged to be in an attitude of prayer. That's right. Atti attitude of prayer and thanksgiving. And uh, I'm thankful for salvation. I'm thankful for eternal life that's coming. I'm thankful for the things that are going on in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I used, uh, excuse me. I used to be able to sing some with a uh, cappella gospel quartet, <clears throat> men's quartet, and I did that for about 20 years. And about four years ago, 
I discovered that it was getting harder and harder to sing. And uh, now I, I don't sing hardly at all, and I miss that. And uh, here a year ago, from the cancer treatment, I had to stop eating orally. And uh, I praise God for that. <clears throat> it makes me homesick to eat a tree of life, to sing praises to Jesus, and eat at that long banquet table. So, praising God, no matter what happens, if it's some sickness I have, if it's a family member that I love dies, I am going to praise Jesus because he promises his burden is light, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And when you praise him for something, it's like him being the forklift and taking the load off of you and putting it somewhere else. We serve an awesome God. He cares about the number of hair on our head. And he, he's with us all the time. And I am convinced that we need to stay, I need to stay. And I need to stay. In an attitude of prayer and thanksgiving because we serve an awesome God. Don't focus on what's going on wrong with you. Focus on what's going right with you and always praise Jesus because he is our mighty friend and creator God. Amen. Amen. What an wow. incredible testimony. Wow. Yes. And you know, the prayers of uh, Bruce's mom and dad, uh, Merlin and Joanne, for years, he wasn't a Christian, and they continued to pray for him like yeah. you did your children. And yes. look at the testimony now. I, I don't know. Amen. This is a great way to me to end the program. It's one thing to talk it, <laughs> but it's the other thing to walk it. And yes. thank you so much, Bruce and Jackie, both of you, for yes. what you do for the cause of God and the inspiration you are mm. to literally millions around the world that we praise God and good and the bad. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so I, I don't know, I'm, I'm blessed today. Oh, I'm very thankful too. to know people, thankful that Bruce is our board chairman yes. and yes. what an inspiration he is and Jackie to uh, all of us. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. So many people would be complaining or saying, why me or why mm -hmm. am I going through this or whatever, but Bruce and Jackie are just, they are an inspiration. Oh, they are. To mm -hmm. hear what Bruce is saying and what he's gone through and to still be able to lift his hands and praise God for everything that's going on. We're so grateful. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Bruce and Jackie, for mm -hmm. sharing that. Amen. Mm -hmm. Isn't that so powerful? Mm, we absolutely. love Bruce and oh, Jackie. Yeah. But mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing. I just think of a time we were going through something, not us personally. Well, it was us, but not in the marriage. It was just we were dealing with some stuff. And I remember Bruce giving that same counsel, mm -hmm. praise Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, God, how do I even do that? And yet 1 Thessalonians 5, in everything give thanks. Mm -hmm. And when you choose that walk of praise. So just thank you, Bruce. Thank you for being a living epistle. Mm -hmm. known and read of all men. Thank you for sharing transparently your own journey. And Bruce and Jackie don't mm -hmm. just speak it, oh, no. but they live it. Amen. So what an incredible testimony. Yeah. So transparent, yes. I tell you, just so transparent. Thank yes. you so much for your heart for evangelism, both of you. And uh, I tell you, what, what an inspiration. You know, it's, mm -hmm. they're talking about an attitude of praise. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about also a lifestyle of praise. Amen. Right? Just comes good. out of you. And I tell That's you, you good. Know, it's all the choice and the decision that each one of us have because we all have issues, right? There's all <laughs> difficulties in life. But I tell you, it's just an attitude of praise. And I tell you, what an absolute inspiration. Mm -hmm. Here we are at the end of our program. Go ahead. It's and, easy Danny. to serve the yeah. Lord when things are going good. That's right. true. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the truth is uh, when things aren't going good, it's where do we put our trust? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, again, is to put our trust in Jesus be thankful in all things. And today I'm encouraged, I'm excited. And I always say, you know, it's amazing that God would use any of us, yes. mm. frail human yeah. agents, yes. that he could love any of us, but he does. <laughs> so that's the good news for you today. No matter where you are in this world, no matter what you're going through, 
that God is bigger than all of that. There's no prayer that's so big that God can't solve it. And mm. there's none so small that he doesn't hear it and answer it. Mm. So remember, heaven is on your side. You can't lose. That's heaven right. is on your side. Every day, submit and commit your life to Jesus. Say, Lord, here I am. Take me, use me just as I am. And God will do that in great and mighty and marvelous ways. And you can have a great testimony. You may not have to say a word, but as you go around and deal with people, you walk around, they will know you have Jesus in your heart. Mm, mm -hmm. Amen. Dr. Yvonne, what's on your heart? It's just, it, it, it's so healing when you praise the Lord. When you, mm -hmm. when you spend that quiet time with God and you listen to music that ushers you into his presence and then you praise him and you sing along, it's just such a blessing. So mm -hmm. do that. Start praising God in your quiet time. Praise him when you're doing the dishes. Praise him whenever. <laughs> and watch like yeah. how your life changes. Amen. Amen. What about you, Jill? Amen. I was just thinking 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Mm. Um, you know, the children of Israel were, in, were oppressed by the enemy. They were mm. surrounded. They were in bondage. They were in trouble. They didn't know what to do. And what does the Word of God say? When they began to sing and praise, mm. the Lord set ambushes against the enemy. Amen. So what does that say? When you and I begin to sing and praise, no matter the circumstances, no mm. matter what's going on, when we choose praise, the Lord shows up and he delivers us. Mm. Amen. Mm. Praise the mm. Lord. You no, know, we have so many things to be thankful mm. for. Today is Thanksgiving Day. We want to make Thanksgiving to God every single day of our life. And in closing here, we talked about at the very beginning of the two hours, Psalm 136 and verse 26 says, Oh, give thanks to the God of heaven for his mercy endures forever. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time. Amen. Amen.